Hey guys, what is up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Hope everybody is doing well. We are currently in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic and this is terrible. Uh, no matter if you're going through it or not, obviously it affects us in a lot of different ways. It affects everybody in a standpoint that economically we're all taking a hit and somebody will be affected at some point. Um, now I can go on for an hour talking about my thoughts about this whole coronavirus pandemic and um, how terrible it is. But what I want to do is get back to putting out content that can be helpful to someone out there. And what I'm thinking about is in the midst of all this, um, the market will take a turn for the better at some point and companies will continue to start be hiring. And one thing that we can do as designers is to put our head down and start working on projects if you're not already. In addition, if you're going out for an interview, you have projects, a lot of time you, you're given a design project and things like that. And I was going through a project and it came to mind, I'm like, you know what, one thing that I could talk about, and I've talked about this in the past, is how to get from a blank canvas to a finished high-end visual design, okay? I just wanna go over some simple steps that you can think about it's a, it's it's a it's a section of the entire process that you can start implementing today that will take anybody if you're like me you're not naturally creative i'm not naturally creative meaning that i don't i'm not that type that I can get with a like a notebook go out into a park and start designing and coming up with ideas that's just not me i have to follow a process in order to be able to start designing something. And that's what I want to get across in this video. If you trust the process and follow these simple steps, anybody can design anything uh, from a digital standpoint. If you're a designer, this will help you out get from a blank canvas to start being able to design something from a high-end visual design standpoint, high fidelity. All right, so there's two steps that I want to talk about. First step is the kickoff discovery phase. All right, we're gonna talk about that. And then secondly is another, the second phase, which includes researching, brainstorming, analyzing. Okay, there's some sub steps in this phase that I wanna go over. That if you follow these steps, you'll be able to get to the point to where you can start designing. All right, so in order to design something from nothing, you gotta start with phase one which is the kickoff discovery phase. Now in this phase, this is the part, you can time box it 30 minutes, an hour, a day, I don't care how long it is, but you get into this phase and you learn everything about this particular project, all right? There is nothing off limits outside of you actually doing the visual, the high-end visual designs. You wanna go through every single question under the sun that you have related to this particular project. Now, if you're working for a company, people might come at you in different ways with information about this project. So, so if you're working with a company, you might be working with a product manager. And, and most of the time, that product manager has information about this project that they're about to give you. They'll have what they want to get across, what they want to accomplish, the requirements, et cetera. They can have it in the form of a document. They can have it just you know, written down on a piece of note, whatever it is, okay? They might have that information for you. In other cases, you guys are just starting the process. You have an idea, you wanna talk about this, you wanna kick this off, okay? So in that, in that case, you're not, you don't have the requirements, you don't have things written down, so you take this opportunity to do that. But in this phase, you could be sketching out things on a whiteboard, on a piece of paper, but for the most part, you're asking questions. You can go through a hundred questions, as many questions as you want, enough for you to just get an idea to move to the second phase. Now, what I mean by that, you ask every single question. Why are we doing this? What are we doing? Who are we designing this for? What are we designing this on? Is it for a tablet? Is it on the TV? Is it, are we designing for the car? You know, are we designing a dashboard? Are we designing a billboard? Whatever it is we're designing, you, you basically wanna ask every question under the sun, okay? And in the midst of this, this phase, you want to get across or you want to come away, take away with some requirements. What are the key requirements that we're trying to solve for, all right? Now, when you, after this phase, and I'm not gonna get into all the details, like, like the, the, the pixel detail of what you have to be asking in this, um, in this phase, 
It could be anything. You ask as many questions as you want to get an understanding of this, this, uh, this project, okay? And then once you have enough information, all right, you identified the problem, you thought about some solutions, now you can move on to phase two. Now in phase two, this is what this is where I want to get a little bit more detailed and go over some of the sub steps in this phase. Phase two is where you're going to be brainstorming, you're going to be researching, doing your own research and analyzing um, the market, analyzing competitors and things like that. All right. So in this second phase, all right, after you've gotten that gotten over with the kickoff and discovery phase in the second phase, the first thing that I do is I rewrite out all the requirements the key requirements that I've um, that I've gathered in phase one. So the way I write them out is I write them out like user stories. As a user, I need to be able to search for hotels. For example, if we're designing a project for hotels, as a user, I need to be able to enter my check-in date, my checkout date, and search for hotels. As a user, I need to be able to search for hotels by zip code. As a user, I need to be able to enter my information and book a hotel reservation, etc. So you go over through you go through your requirements and you write them out. Most of the time, if I'm doing a project for myself or if I'm in an interview and and they give me a design project, I have about five to four, maybe t up to ten different um, requirements, you know, written out as a user, blah blah blah, as a user, blah blah blah. So I'll have like five to ten bullet point user stories. That's the first thing that I do. I, I want to do that just so I'm clear as I start brainstorming and going through and getting to sketching that I'm solving for those um, requirements because sometimes in that first phase, you're not always writing them out and documenting them in that fashion. So the first thing I do is rewrite out all my user stories. The second thing that I do in this phase is I scour the market. OK, what I do is I scour the market to look for other solutions, whether it's competitors in the sp same space or different type of apps that will solve for these user stories. So, for example, I was working on a project that um, it was built around trying to allow users to book appointments for veterinarians for their pet. Like if you have a pet dog and you want to book an appointment to at the local veterinarian. That was a project that I was tasked with, okay? So in the midst of me going through this scouring the market, I looked for apps on the market that allowed people the ability to search for things. Like for example, if I needed to search for a veterinarian site, are there apps on the market that allows you to search and find things? And one app that came to mind or several apps that came to mind was apps like Zillow and Redfin. They allow you to search for homes, right? They solve for this problem for a user actually searching things. So I went to Zillow, I went to Redfin and I was like, okay, how do you start? Like when you open up the app, what does it look like? What do you do? Do they show you homes right off the bat or do you have to enter a zip code to, you know, to find homes or what do you do, right? And obviously I discovered that, yeah, you have to enter a zip code and they start with the map, a Google map sort of API um, component and they show you homes in your area, right? Based on the zip code, based on the search. So, and then I, I, I found other apps like Uber Eats, right? Where you're at, actually, you're, you know, before you order food, you have to search for a restaurant. How does Uber Eats solve for this problem? Do you... And, and what I found from Uber Eats is they actually show you restaurants within your area right off the bat. And you can type in a zip code and search for different restaurants in your area, or you can type in the exact name of that restaurant. So different ways on how to discover and find things, right? So again, in the, if you talk, if I'm talking about, you know, an app that, that centers around veterinarians and vets, you know, I looked outside the vet market and found other apps that saw for that same problem to be able to design, right? So that's what I mean when I say scour the market and look for solutions in the marketplace that solves for those requirements that you just written down in the first part. The third thing that I do in this phase, the second phase, is I start sketching out task flows, okay? So based on my user stories or my 
my requirements that's written out in use cases um, and based on the solutions that I found by scouring the market and these interfaces, I start sketching out a task flow. And basically a task flow is I take, um, you know, one particular requirement. So like a general requirement, I need to be able to book a hotel. Okay. So what does that flow look like? So that flow is going to consist of maybe six to seven to 10 different screens and interactions. So step one might be entering, you know, your check-in and check-out date. The step two would be entering some additional details. And step three would be, um, you know, selecting the exact room that you need. Okay. So if you go through this flow, that's a task flow, right? And basically you, what I do is I like to come around if, if I have to, when I'm sketching this out, if I'm around seven to 10 screens, that's enough for me from a personal project standpoint to build off of, okay? Because when you're designing a project for your, for your website, for your portfolio, you don't need a hundred screens, all right? All you need is about six to seven to 10, up to a max of 10, 12 screens, if you will. That's actually more than enough because from a you know product designer standpoint, when you're pu putting this on your 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 portfolio you're going to at some point kind of show your process and, and show how you document and it came up with these screens but you don't need a million screens all you need is about six to ten screens if you will sometimes three screens can be enough um but when i when i go through my task flows if i have about 10 screens 10 sketched out screens that's where I can kind of move on and I'm like, okay, this is enough. So you, you can do as many task goals as you want. I kind of judge it based on around the, the number of screens that um, I have to design off of. So now I have my, I sketched out my task flow. Okay. So it was rough sketches. Second, the, the, the fourth thing that I do in this phase, now I'm going to get to closer to starting to do some visual design work. What I do is I have to get some visual design inspiration. And what I do in this part is I build a mood board. I build what's called a visual design mood board. So what I do is I go to all the galleries on the, on the website or on the internet, you know, the dribbles, the Pinterest, and I look for inspiration apps that I want to, I want my site to look like, you know, um, so I will probably take screenshots of maybe 50 to 60 different, different types of cool looking designs. And what I want to get from this is overall look and feel. I want to, you know, look at icons that I like. I want to look at typographies that I like. I want to look at images, illustrations, and just an overall look and feel on what I want my app to kind of look and feel like. Okay. It's my personal, if it's a personal project, it's my app. It's my choice. I can design this thing however I want. Okay. But I'm going to design it based on my, my sketches, my task flows. Okay. Those, those, rough, those rough wireframes. But gathering this visual design mood board will at some point allow me to say, okay, I want my site to look like this. I want it to have these colors. I want it to have this typography. I want it to have these type of icons and this type of images or illustrations. Now, after you've done that, now you can move on to start doing some visual design work. And what you do is you take your sketches or wireframes, however you want to do, you can do sketches, you can do wireframes. It's, 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 it's optional up to you. You take your sketches and you start designing that first screen. Okay. You take that sketch, you design that first screen based on scouring the internet, the, the market research that you've done, the Zillow's, the Uber East of the world, right? You've got that information. You've built a sketch based on those. And so you're going to start doing some visual designs based on those in addition to your sketches. All right with that visual mood board that you've gathered, you can now putting some background colors together. You can put maybe a navigation bar together. You can put some images together. You can put some, some colors. You can, you can start applying some typography, some icons to that interface, and you build it based on your sketches. All right, so basically from that first screen, now you use that as a template that you're going to start building out your visual design styles based off that initial design and then you can move forward as you go through all the additional screens and you just repeat that process for each and every screen in order to design for them all right now going through all this that's how you get from blank to something blank to something you have to trust 
the process. All right. So I just wanted to post this video because I was looking at one of my projects and I, I said to myself, and I'm 20 years deep into being a product designer and I still have to kind of stop and gather my thoughts. Okay. How did I get to this completed design? Because sometimes, I mean, with so much experience, you just kind of go through things, you know, naturally, but I'm like, this will be very helpful for those of you that are getting started and that sometimes, you know, you don't really have a, a clear defined process and you don't have a way of going about doing things and maybe you're doing things in the wrong way. I don't know. Um, but if you start from the, the, this process from a blank canvas and you have an idea of a project, how do you get to a visual design? You got to go through this process, trust the process, go through these steps and you'll get to the point where you can start designing something. Anyway, guys, hopefully this was helpful. If you want to learn more about my process and you want to look over my shoulder and watch me design a project from beginning to end, you can go to my site, MLUX Academy, and I teach you just that. For those of you um, that feel this is great, this is enough, you can start getting started today. Hopefully this is helpful to some of you out there. Maybe you're taking an interview and you got a project and uh, you just want to know how to get started. This is a great starting point. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully everybody's good out there and we'll get through this coronavirus pandemic and be on the upswing at some point soon, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon in the next video. All right, peace.